Hey, it's Rick. Welcome to the channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how I designed and built this micro registration mechanism for my screen printing press. I bought an old used manual six color six station press, but it doesn't have micro registrations. These are super handy for registering multicolor prints with fine details. I'm using store bought hardware for this. These are the turnbuckles that will be used for adjustment. I also picked up a few different springs, since I don't know at this point which ones will work best. I built the proof of concept out of foam core, just to see how the parts would go together. This lets me think through the design better and make changes much quicker than working directly in steel. There's three major pieces here. The adjustable piece that holds the screen is sandwiched between two other pieces. That's where the adjustability comes from. The whole thing is designed to sit between the existing frame mount and the press arm, allowing me to adjust the final position of the screen. The problem I have with my press now is that when I tighten the screen clamps, the registration shifts. I've welded a connecting piece between the two clamp knobs to mitigate this effect, but it didn't remove it entirely. To make it easier to turn the turnbuckles, I 3D printed a little slide-on knob which I epoxy into place. I'll put this file on my Thingiverse and put a link in the description. Now I can start building parts out of steel. I'm using a piece of 3 16 inch thick flat steel sheet that I purchased from a local metal supplier. That's just under 5 millimeters thick in metric. I traced the pattern from my foam core mock-up and cut it out with a plasma cutter. I'm using a level here as a guide so my cuts come out straight. You don't need fancy tools for this. You could use a jigsaw with a metal blade or a bandsaw. Once the parts are cut, there's a bit of a cleanup. This junk is called dross. It's the liquid metal that the plasma cutter blows out of the cut. It's easy enough to break off with pliers. Some parts need slots in them, so I drill a hole at both ends and use my mill to cut them out. When the parts are finished, I use a flap disc on an angle grinder to smooth them out and grind off the mill scale. Some of the holes need nuts welded on, so I thread them onto a bolt and insert the bolt into the hole to ensure the nut is centered in the hole. The pins that the turnbuckles attach to need some sort of platform for the turnbuckles to sit on, so I welded on some washers. As a guide, I put the pins into the holes, and this helps keep the washers level for welding. I've also got to make the clamping knobs. I looked around locally, but I couldn't find anything in the size and length I wanted, and to order them offline would have taken too long. So I modeled and 3D printed the handle, and now I've got to make the metal parts. I drilled a hole in the piece that goes into the handle, and now I'll plug weld a piece of threaded rod into the hole. I'm using a V-block here as a jig to keep the parts aligned. Once the welding is done, and everything is cooled down, I can epoxy the metal bit to the handle. I'll put a link to this handle file in the description. This is what it looks like when it's done. I had to make four of these, two short and two long. Then it was time to test fit everything. Everything up to this point has just been tack welded together in case I've got to make major modifications. One concern I had was how much weight it was going to add to the end of the arm. The arm lifts because a couple of strong springs, and I was afraid if I added too much weight, the arm wouldn't stay up. I put it through its paces, checking for flex and weight, checking to see if anything is binding or will interfere with the rest of the press. When I was confident that I didn't need to modify anything, I finished off all the welds and painted it black. Then I did another test fit. I'm going to have to figure out how to secure those turnbuckles in place from the top. I don't have an idea for that at the moment. At this late stage, I decided it was a little too heavy. The arm stays up by itself, but just barely, so I decided to mark out and cut away as much unnecessary steel as possible. I also came up with an idea for the turnbuckles. I decided to drill a hole through the pin and use another washer held in place with a cotter pin. Time for one last fitting. I've done all the mods to these finalized parts. I cut a fair bit of excess material away to make them lighter and drilled out all the pins for the turnbuckle mounts. One of the last things is to put on the springs. These springs maintain tension on the turnbuckles at all times, taking up the slop and backlash in the threads. They have to be fairly strong. I forgot to film the welding of the connectors. They're simply bent roofing nails with the heads cut off. Of the selection I purchased, these ones work the best. Even the lateral adjuster needs a spring. I thought it would be important to mark the adjustment zero starting point. So I marked it up with a dip pen and white ink and then scored it with a cutoff wheel on a Dremel. This way the marks won't get rubbed off. Now I know where to return the setting to at the beginning of a setup. Here's one thing I'd like to fix. 
You can see how sloppy the alignment marks are. This is because I drilled this hole slightly too large for the threaded rod. That allows the top piece to move around too much. I might remake the top piece with smaller holes. It's an easy part to make. Here's how it works in practice. You loosen the top knobs that connect the screen bracket to the arm. Just loosen them a little bit. And then by turning the two side turnbuckles, you can pivot the entire screen one way or the other. To move the whole screen left or right, you turn the center turnbuckle. When everything is aligned, you tighten the two knobs and then turn the bottom braces until they're just touching the screen bracket. This keeps the whole unit from flexing and messing up your off contact. Here you can see in detail what's happening. As I turn one side out, the screen sort of rotates away from that side and then comes back. The other side has the same effect, but in the opposite direction. You could move the screen in and out by turning both side turnbuckles at the same time. The cross adjuster moves the entire screen side to side. This is only designed for small movements. You're supposed to get the registration most of the way by adjusting the screen in its clamps. Now that I've finished this and tried it out, I don't think the design is a success. The turnbuckles have very coarse threads, which means you don't have very fine control over the movement. You'd have to fabricate your own turnbuckles with a finer thread, and that's a lot more work than I think it's worth. The only reason I made this in the first place is because the manufacturer of my press is no longer in business, so I couldn't just buy these off the shelf. This was just a test to see if it could be done and see how it would work. The problem with manual presses is that when you tighten the knobs that lock the screen in place, the screen moves a bit. There seems to be no way to stop this, even with a brace across both of the knobs to try to tie them together. I've made that mod to all the heads on my press, and it only helped a little. I think maybe I'll have to investigate making a better way to lock the screen down. Maybe some sort of a clamp that doesn't require twisting would solve the problem. Anyway, they can't all be winners. Let me know in the comments if you have any ideas to improve this design. And that's it for this one. Don't forget to hit all the buttons on the way out, and thanks for watching.